Hello, welcome to the main causes of World War One. Right. <clears throat> the causes of World War One are actually caused by four different causes and then a spark. And the causes literally spell out the word main, so like the main causes, militarism, alliances, imperialism, and nationalism. Okay, so let's dive in. These are the things you should understand. All right, so what were the main causes of World War One, and what role did the did they play in starting the Great War? All right, and you should be able to see where these are. Militarism is the end. Militarism, so military. It's a policy of glorifying one's armies. So a key word association for militarism could be army, okay, or military. It's glorifying it. It's making it better. It's making it big, right? Kaiser Wilhelm, the king of... Germany says, I and the army were born for one another. Like, I am meant to be in the military. That is his life. So he's a militarist. All right, so what is militarism? It's the pos policy of glorifying your military power, making it bigger, making it stronger, having a large army, a lot of people prepared and ready to fight. It's also having a lot of weapons. So a key word association could be weapons or arms. You might hear weapons being told. All right, soldiers or army, navy, all right? These are other keyword association for militarism. So it's army, navy, weapons, arms, soldiers. You see those words, you should start to think about it's militarism. So what they would do, the countries in Europe would do, is they would compete to see who could have the biggest standing military. Like Great Britain had the most naval ships. They're an island. They got to protect themselves. Well, Germany decided they want to compete with that, and they start making a bunch of naval ships to compete with the British. Um, at the same time, the Germans are pulling more and more men into their army to compete with how many people the French have. So this competition, what it does is I have more than you, so there's a better chance that I am going to kill you, so I'm not afraid of war. So as they make their militaries bigger and bigger and bigger, they're not afraid to go to war. In fact, they want to go to war to prove that their military is bigger and better. So militarism, making the military bigger, all right, competing with people to see who can have the most. And you can take a look here, and you can pause the video if you wanted to, but the amount of money that is spent leading up. The war starts in 1914. If you look at like 1908, where countries started and how much they spend at the end, like Germany almost doubled how much money they were spending in five years on their military. France, same thing, right? These people are spending a lot, a lot of money gearing up for war, right? And you can see here like the size of the army. Great Britain's having 100,000, but the Germans had 4.2 million. The reason they had 4.2 million people in their army is because France had 3.7. Right? The Germans also have 281 naval ships. That is to compete with the British 388 ships. Okay, um, So they're competing back and forth who can have the most uh, weapons, who can have the most men, the most naval ships, Okay, the most gear leading up to it. They really want, and this like you know makes them proud, makes them excited. They, they want to go to war. Make no doubt about it. They want to go to war. Okay, Also, prior wars have glorified war even more like um germany and france had a war france lost this chunk of land called alizé lorraine because they lost it they are now mad at germany and they want an opportunity to go to war with germany so they can get their land back okay so that's militarism too this desire for war to get the land back alliances is the a in names now what an alliance is is where uh Two countries agree to support each other if one of them is attacked, okay? Key word association, support, agreement, all right? Help, ally, or alliances. Ally is A-L-L-Y, okay? Um, why would a, a nation agree to help another? Well, if you have a really small country who's kind of fighting with a big country, the little country is going to need a big country to help them out. And so the little country will team up with other people. And so what this war will be is three main powers on each side. The Triple Entente, also called the Allies, will be Great Britain, France, and Russia. The Triple Alliance, which will be known as the Central Powers, will be Germany, Austria, Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire. So these two are alliance. These three agree to help each other. These three agree to help each other. So when one, like if Germany attacked Britain, Great Britain, France and Russia would then jump in and vice versa. You know, if Great Britain attacked Austria-Hungary, Germany and then the Ottoman Empire would jump in. 
And so what alliances do is it kind of sets it up like dominoes. Once one goes to war, they all go to war. Okay. And so this is going to, you know, if you're helping somebody, it's like a street fight. I like to say like street fights start on one-on-one, -on -one, but as soon as this guy starts losing, his buddy jumps in and then this guy's buddy jumps in and then the whole squad jumps in and it's this big cluster. And that's pretty much what alliances are is it's people having each other's back. Okay. Um, so these are your alliances. The, so the central powers are in pink, Germany, Austria, Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire, which is today modern day Turkey. And then the triple entente was France, Great Britain, and Russia. But the other ones join in, but they're smaller. Those are the main three. Imperialism is the I in mains. Now, imperialism is the hardest one for students to understand. Um, this map does a really good job. All of these different colors are not colors of African countries. These different colors are colors of European countries who own those areas. Like the green, the green are the French. Look at how much land they have. So imperialism is a larger country or a, a more powerful country taking over a less powerful country. It is taking land and resources in another part of the country. So you're taking somebody else's land and resources. So land, resources, those can be keywords for imperialism. What the Europeans were doing prior to World War I is they were fighting over the land and resources. So two key words here, in Africa. And this is going to lead to a rivalry because if you have the land that has like all the gold on it, I'm going to want that land too. And so I'm going to build up my military to go and attack you. So this desire for land, this imperialism leads to more militarism. Other key words to look for when it comes to imperialism, colonies, okay? Colonies or territories, if you set up a colony, that means you went and took land somewhere else. Okay, so it's a more powerful nation taking over a less powerful nation. Taking land, resources, and establishing colonies. Okay, um, raw materials, right here, this word. Raw materials is another key word for imperialism. Okay, so imperialism is extending someone, a more powerful nation's authority over another country, either socially, economically, politically, or militarily. Okay, so an example would be, you know, the European nations fighting over markets to steal land and sell their goods in Africa and Asia. And what this does is it pits them against each other because where the British are selling goods, the Germans are going to sell goods. And where the Germans are selling goods, the French want to sell goods or take the land and take the materials. So they're going to fight each other. So this imperialism actually leads to militarism. They're going to want to fight each other. Okay, and they're going to build up their resources. The bigger the colonies or the more land you own around the world, the more, the bigger the military you need to defend it. Okay, so this is a good picture of imperialism too. Like the pizza is Africa. And then you have all of these uh, European nations taking a slice of Africa. Okay, they're taking over other land that is not theirs. All right, and then nationalism is the last one. All right, nationalism is the belief that your people, your country is better than everyone else. So we are better than you is the best definition of nationalism. Better is a key word, all right? Better, best, or superior. They think they're superior than other people. And so your national interest and national unity takes place over everything else. It's our country over anybody else's country. Think of like the Olympics, right? You're like, yeah, go USA or go whatever country you're rooting for. That's nationalism. When you believe in your country in that situation, that's nationalism. Okay. Um, this feeling of being better than somebody else is going to lead to war. All right, because if I feel like if I feel like my military is bigger than you and I feel that my people are smarter and better than you and I I you know let's do this let's go to war let's make this happen okay um and so this is going to lead to conflict because if I don't fear you then let's do this and it's going to go to war but the alliance system is going to pull everyone in all right um and so that's going to cause an issue. And there's ethnic groups that want their own nation, ethnic groups that live in the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. There's people, different groups of people besides German that live in the German Empire. And these people don't want to be ruled by other people. So this is going to fester up and cause problems. It's actually what's going to lead to the war. So if you're having troubles with the main, it's militarism, alliances, imperialism, nationalism. Okay, and then the spark that started the war was... Austria-Hungary, this is their empire, and they went down into Serbia, okay? 
um, they had control over Serbs, and the Serbs don't like them. And so the Archduke, he's the next dude in line, the next guy in line for the uh, Austrian-Hungarian throne, right? So Archduke Franz Ferdinand, down here. He's heir to the Austrian throne, so he's next in line. He goes to Sarajevo, okay, down here in Bosnia, Sarajevo. And while he's there, they make an attempt on his life. There was a terrorist group by the name of the Black Hand, right? There was about three assassins that tried to get him. He was driving his car, and one guy took a grenade and threw it, and it bounced off the hood of his car, rolled under another car, and exploded, injuring two people. The authorities immediately got him. Um, Gabriel Princip was one of the assassins. He's actually going to be the assassin that kills him. He heard the 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 bomb or the grenade go off they redirected him the archduke put him in a meeting when he got out he was supposed to take an alternative route to go to uh i believe the hospital to visit the people who got injured but the driver wasn't told of the new route and so when he he went up and then when he changed route he was backing up and lo and behold gabriel prince up is sitting there Sipping on some coffee at a cafe, just spent his last nickel, and lo and behold, there's the Archduke and his wife. <clears throat> he comes up, and he um, fires two shots. He hits the he hits the Archduke's wife, I believe, in the stomach area, um, and then he shot the Archduke in the chest. They almost both die instantly. Now, Austria-Hungary is mad at Serbia, and they expect a short war because Austria-Hungary, big country. Serbia, tiny country. Boom. Knock them out right away, right? However, Serbia was backed up by Russia, who's also backed up by Great Britain and France. Austria-Hungary, if attacked by Russia, is backed up by Germany, and both of those are backed up by the Ottoman Empire. So soon as Austria attacks Serbia, Russia's going to attack Austria, Germany's going to attack Russia and then the French and the British are going to jump in. So what ends up happening is it was supposed to be a war between two different countries, Austria, Hungary, and Serbia, but it becomes this giant war. All right. So that's so sometimes we call it the mains with an S, the spark, the spark that started the war. There was a lot of, a lot of uh, powder, a lot of gunpowder there, and all it needed was a spark, and boom, it was going to blow up. These these nations of Europe, they were ready and willing to go to war, and they just needed the right thing to do it. And this was the spark that set it off. All right, if you have any questions about this, you want to email me, uh, want me to chat with you, I will gladly clear this up. Until then, have a great day.